coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. All right, welcome back to the Paper Stack Podcast. My name is Rick Allen. This is my esteemed colleague, friend, co host, Brett Berkey. And we are back for a really special day, special podcast. Why is this special, Brett? This is number 100. 100. 100. We've made it to the the mad, with triple digits. We're at 100. It's funny, I talk to people all the time. They say, yes, I follow you. I catch your podcast. And it still blows me away when I talk to people. I'm like, I can't believe you're the, you're (laughs) the, you're the one. I feel like sometimes we're talking and it's just going out into the digital world and it never... Uh, and people somehow watch There's people listening. <laughs> listening to the... Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we have good things to say. You know, that's... Uh, it's, you know, uh, yeah, I was looking back at some of the videos and how far we've come from the first episode, mm-hmm. which was shot on our back porches and, and literally there was... I think some, we were, I was at the back porches and then we did one at the pool. We did one at the pool. We were drinking beer and our kids running around. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, and then you know, there was one where we were trying to shoot the video and we couldn't leave because it was COVID and, and the freaking lawnmower people were like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, there's been, oh my there's been so many of those, those bloopers uh, or yeah, there's, snafus. There's been a couple of them. One of the last ones just recently, we, <laughs> there was a wire hanging down the front. That would, oh my gosh, I saw that on TikTok the other day. Did you? It literally popped up on my TikTok and I was like. Yeah, it didn't look very good at the first day. You say we've come very far, but yet we shot half a podcast with a <laughs> wire. we have come pretty far. We'll, we'll be better by four, like four hundred. We'll, we'll finally probably figure this all out. But yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's good. That's uh, we're gonna go to DME next week. I'm super excited to go to Nashville. Uh, I wish I was going with you. One, it's in Nashville, but two, DME is really a good, a good conference. Nate, Nate has taken. Picked it up from what was the foundation that was laid there and has really run with it. And yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I haven't been to Nashville in decades, and so it should be fun. I'm looking forward to eating some barbecue. Looking forward to the final, finally taking it out and offering it to the public. No closings? Noclosings.com. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited about that. That's, That's been I, really good. I've so. seen it. I've used it. It's, it's pretty robust. It's, it's pretty very cool. robust. It's yeah. going to... It's fantastic. Mike's done a, a great job on it. Mm-hmm. Um, our other developers have worked on it. It's just, it's great. It's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So now you don't have to have your assets listed on PaperStack to still get that PaperStack experience of having the automation of having everything handled, use of escrow. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. I'm excited for that product. You know, once that starts to get built out, then we can backport stuff to PaperStack, and so it's just gonna make everything better. So it's gonna be so cool. So, all right. So today. We are going to do something because last time me and Rick shot a podcast, uh, we talked about foreclosure. And what to look for. What to look for in foreclosure. And the word that kept coming up again, which well, kind one of, of sound, One of the topics was bankruptcy. Well, they kind of sound synopsis, you know, they're kind of, they kind of run hand in hand sometimes. So, and so what I want to know th- this time around is what is the important part of bankruptcy when you're purchasing notes? What's the advantages of it? Why would I want something in bankruptcy? Mm-hmm. What am I looking out for if somebody's in bankruptcy? Are there patterns I want to watch out for? Just just an all-around synopsis of, you know, a high-level look of, you know, because it is a filter on the for sale page, so you can actually filter by bankruptcy. So why? Why would I want to do that? Why would I want a bankruptcy? It's a good, uh, that's a great question. Some people love them. Some people hate them. I've been in, I've kind of run the gamut on bankruptcies. One thing to note is there's really two major types of bankruptcies that you're going to deal with, and that's Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. Right. Now, there's, I think there's six total types of bankruptcies. There's four other ones out there. Chapter 11, which is typically, that's only done, used by businesses. Chapter 15, which I believe is done by foreign foreign agents who have um, or, or are filing bankruptcy, so people from another country. And uh, like there's a chapter 12, which I believe is like for farmers. So there's different kinds of bankruptcies out there. The important ones are chapter 7, chapter 13. So chapter 7, pretty much the borrower doesn't want the asset. Okay. And... Chapter 13, you're likely to be in a situation where the borrower wants to retain the asset 
and payments. Now, you can be locked up in a Chapter 13 where the bar is like, look, I don't want that asset. And so you have to get what's called relief from stay. I remember that. You remember talking about relief really yeah. from stay. And that's just some kind of special document. You can get it online right. easily or is it? Yeah. So, no, you don't. That's not a document you get online. Let's just kind of start with when you're first initially looking at a bankruptcy, you want to look for the proof of claim. Proof of claim? What does that mean? The proof of claim. It's a document that's filed with the courts that outlines the claim of debt owed by the bankruptcy estate. Who files that? The creditor does. So if I'm the mortgage holder, I would have, I don't do it. I have my attorney do it. But what will typically happen is you'll get notification that the borrower's filing bankruptcy because you have a, a lien against the property. You bought the, you bought a note, they're filing bankruptcy, they pull title report, search public record. Why it's very important to record your assignments is so that if they do file bankruptcy, they know who to come looking to. Oh, that's a good point. Well, that's the same thing. If <laughs> like, Yeah, if, if, if you go to file bankruptcy or you go to, uh, you don't file, your, if you don't file your proof that you've purchased the property, the assignment, and they go to sell the property and they go to pull up the lien, it's going to be the last lien holder. I've seen that happen before. We've had yeah. people like chase people down on the platform like, dude, you never got this recorded. So it's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's important. That. So okay. whenever you are um, looking at a bankruptcy, look at the proof of claim. And that's something that the creditor puts out. and that is, is The that creditor get, will give it to their attorney who will file it with the bankruptcy court. Does that get recorded? Yes, it'll get recorded into the bankruptcy. And so what the proof of claim does is it outlines, um, it outlines the debt that's in the bankruptcy. It'll basically say, is it secured debt or unsecured debt? Okay. You know, credit cards are unsecured. unsecured. Mortgages, secured. secured. Car loans? Unsecured. Se- no, they're secured. Oh, by, they're by, by the, the car. They're secured by the car. So it'll outline usually in, in the proof of claim, or not usually always, it outlines what's secured, what's not secured. Oh, so wait a second. But why would you know all the other stuff, the car, the credit cards, and why are you filing that if you're the mortgage? If I'm the mortgage or, or I'm the person that, that holds the mortgage, that I own the mortgage, I'm just filing my proof of claim for the mortgage. Okay, so the creditors, the, the credit card will file proof of right. claim. Right, and so that way you can go in there and see, like, hey, look, what's the total, like, how many people are filing claims here? Do we have oh. five mortgages this person has? Do we have one mortgage? Do we have a bunch of credit cards, car loans? Are they getting sued by somebody? What's going on? Like, you can you can see all that. So whenever it's, and usually you have, uh, you know, a couple months to file your proof of claim. Okay. So it has, but if you don't file the proof of claim, mm-hmm. then you might miss out. So when you're looking for this, you when you're looking at a bankruptcy, you want to make sure you're looking at the proof of claim, and then you want to look and say, okay, well, what type of bankruptcy is it? Is it a seven or a thirteen? So proof of claim plays for both seven and thirteen. Yes, there's always proof of claim. All the creditors are filing their proof of claim. That's like adding up all the debts and everybody files it and you can see what's, how much money is owed to, and to whom. And the person in the house chooses whether they want to do 7 or 13. Yes, they'll usually file, well, yes, they'll decide I'm going to file a Chapter 7 or I'm going to file a Chapter 13. So you get noticed that, hey, look. Bankruptcy has been filed. Right, it doesn't matter Chapter 7 or 13. And then you go, hey, this is, go to my lawyer, hey, this is what was owed, this is the UPB that's owed? At the time, the, no, not the UPB, the total amount owed to you at the time they filed bankruptcy. So that might be arrears. Arrearage. So they may be current on their mortgage and just have a bunch of credit cards or, or car loans or something else that they're like falling behind on or something, some giant debt came over their head and they need to file a, a bankruptcy to cover it. So chapter seven, usually that's going to be a chapter 13, right? Because if they're up to date on their house, they don't, they don't want to let their house go. Okay, okay. They want to keep their house. Chapter 7 is like, it's all going. It is. They'll sell their assets, except if it's a primary residence. They, they can't force you to sell your primary residence to cover debt in Chapter 7. You get to keep that. That's, that's outside the bounds of, of bankruptcy. But they still have to pay. Right. If, but if you're, yes. Yes, they have to continue to pay. So as a note investor, like how is it different if it's Chapter 7 or 13? If they, if they, they can choose if they want to pay. They're choosing on the assets that they want to restructure and make payment plans on to keep. 
chapter seven, they're taking their the, the chapter seven. They're saying, look, I want to be absolved of this debt. I don't want this debt. So they sell off the assets they have available, pay off the debt, and you're done. Got it. Chapter 13, you're saying, hey, I messed up. I need to catch up on these. Let's make a, a payment plan. Got it. So it's a payment plans or pre-petition or contra- contractual payments, and then there's post-petition payment plans. So What's that mean, post-petition? I'm filing for it. Here's the plan I want. This is the pre-petition plan, yeah. post-petition. Here's the plan that we agreed on. So you may say, here, this is how much I'm willing to pay. And usually you have to have it caught up in three to five years. So they put together everything. They put together a plan. Here are the debts that I'm going to restructure and I'm going to get caught up. Here are the debts. And then they say, okay, here's the proposed plan. Mm -hmm. Here's the plan that's been approved, the approved plan. Who approves it? It'll have to be approved by the creditors and by the courts. Got it. Okay, okay. So they they submit a plan. This is what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. And then the the post will be like, this is actually... This is what's been agreed upon. This is what's stamped in. Here it is. So... For a chapter 13, these can look really attractive if they have a five-year plan and they're a year and a half into their plan, right? Right. You're because getting- they're, you're getting two payments. You have what's called the arrearage account. So this is all the money that's past due, but they still have to continue to make their normal mortgage payment. Right. So you're going to get an arrearage account and you're going to get a mortgage account, a mortgage payment. So this can really boost your returns getting two payments. I could see that. So now, here I am going to play, why the heck would you do that? If, if, if I'm getting... Why the heck would you what? <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm the guy who's getting the, the two payments, why am I... This is good. I like it. I'm getting two payments. I'm going to sell it. Like, <laughs> why, why are you selling it? Well, what if you bought it as a, um, as a non-performer for 50 cents on the dollar? Okay. Right? And now you're a year and a half in. They're making their payments on a payment plan. You can sell both of those and sell them at a higher margin. Or I've seen people actually sell the mortgage and, 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 kept, the and kept the arrearage account. How does that work when you're transferring it? the loan? I don't know. I haven't done it. You haven't done <laughs> it? No. Because I'm like that. Because that would be kind of weird. Because you don't own the mortgage anymore, but they're paying you. But you're, uh, you're, they, there's an arrearage there, so you keep the, you maintain the arrearage account. Interesting. So they, so someone would actually want to maybe sell because they bought it as not performing. Now it's performing because of this, and now they can sell for a lot more. They'd rather just cash out and go. Correct. Back. Okay. Okay. I understand the process now. Hmm. So chapter seven, you're really looking at probably you're you're going to get the house back. Right. That's the goal. But you said they. If it's a non-performing loan, you're gonna you're gonna likely get the house back because they're gonna use that to sell the asset. So what'll happen is whenever something, whenever a for, um, a bankruptcy starts, right. right it's called automatic stay happens. Okay. An automatic stay means you can't continue any debt collection, whether it's a seven or a 13. As soon as they do bankruptcy, you cannot continue okay. to go after their debt because okay. it's in bankruptcy. Okay. The only way you can do that is if you have your attorney file a motion for relief from stay. And what that does is you're, you're going to the judge and you're saying, hey, this house is in foreclosure, and usually what will be hap- what will happen is it's not their primary residence, and they don't want to keep it, right? Oh, okay. So maybe or like- or it's their primary residence, and they owe you a bunch of money outside of the foreclosure or outside of the bankruptcy that they're like they owe more than the house is worth. Yes. Yeah, so if they owe more than the house is worth, then. They can't very well sell that and, you know, go through the foreclosure, sell the property inside the bankruptcy and end up making anything. No. Yeah. So you sense. file a motion for relief and you get your money out. Yeah, or you, right. you have them remove that asset from the bankruptcy and then you can continue your foreclosure. There's, there's some states that allow you to pick up the foreclosure right where you left off. Other states you have to do a restart. Interesting. And how, how long does this normally take? Are the timelines way oh, different for both? Yeah, bankruptcies can take forever. I mean, they can, it, it can take, I mean, you're talking a couple months just for people to file the proof of claim, right? Borrower files bankruptcy. Now they have to send out notifications to everybody. So Do you got to wait for everyone? Oh, yeah, you got three months. It's like it's going to take three months. So you're waiting on like Visa and MasterCard? You're, you're waiting on everybody. 
You're waiting on those people. So you might be first, but now you got to wait on everyone else. To you got to wait on everybody else. Because it's just one proof of claim. You got to wait for the proof of claim because you, you got to figure out what's going on. They say, okay, close the doors. Here's what we have to work with. And you might be able to, you, you might get everything in and the proof of claim's in. You're like, oh, this person's, they're, they're in, in trouble. trouble. Yeah. Oh, it's jinx. <laughs> so, yeah, so like the, you would, you know. Yeah. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. I don't know if I really have any more questions. I think I think you knocked out everything I have for bankruptcy. I mean, I understand why someone would want it if I'm not the person who bought it and not performing, but mm-hmm. I actually am the person who's wanting to buy it and turn it around and, or just get the money now. Mm-hmm. I can see why someone would want to sell it. I can understand the differences. So some interesting things on relief of stay. Okay. So if you file, if say they're in a Chapter 7, they haven't been making payments or maybe they're in a chapter 13 and they haven't been making payments, right? Okay. And they're, they've agreed to, re- they don't, you know, they're, they're like, listen, I'm going to let this house go. Maybe it was a, an investment property. I'm going to let you file it. Once they do the bankruptcy and you get motion for relief of stay and it's, they've agreed to release it, they typically can't fight you on the foreclosure. They're not, they're typically, they're not supposed to be able to hire an attorney to fight the foreclosure. Yeah, well, I mean, first off, where are they getting the money? They're fighting a foreclosure with an attorney. I mean, if they don't, if they're going bankruptcy, if they have, if they have money to fight a foreclosure, wouldn't they have money to pay off the debts? Hey, man, you should see the amount of times that I had a, uh, I had somebody with uh, a tenant in the house, and they were taking the rents from the tenant to ah. pay the attorney to fight the foreclosure. Oh, huh? You want to talk about, you know, basically giving them. Like unlimited ammo in a gunfight, <laughs> just they, you know, every now and then they they send their attorney two grand, they lose a couple months of rent or a month and a half of rent, and then they just keep on collecting rent, rent, and then you know the way the courts work, they give the money, you know, say an attorney is, you know, like the flat fee attorneys are like, hey, twenty five hundred bucks, that's you know two hundred dollars an hour, you're getting a good amount of time, right, twelve hours. Just to kick the can. And all, they, and all the attorneys do is they would, to fight it, it's like just they're filing, they're filing documents. They're like, well, I need to see, I need you to send me the payment history starting at the, the date of the loan or something like that. They just start digging. I need you to send you, send me the servicing comments from all the past servicers. So what do you have to do? You're going to find that. Now you have to go back and you have to start searching and finding it. And so they, they just do those little things. So how long does it take the attorney to do that? An hour and a half to file that? Well, they've still got then 11 hours of work. Oof. And so you can, you oh, know. man, that's it. It's tough. And so if you, like, you have to have your attorney on it. But, and that's why if I usually get that situation, I'd always just pay them. I'm like, here, how much do you want to go away? Don't you actually have something that you put, I can't remember if it was in the note or the mortgage that you have. If some, if there is, if. You're caught renting the house out. It's like immediate for, foreclosure. Something. It's not an immediate foreclosure. It's called an assignment of rents. You right. can have something in the mortgage that if, if you stop paying rents or like it's an assignment of rents or you can petition for the court to do that. Right. I remember that was something we were, this was like years ago, but you were looking at it and I was like, that's pretty slick where you put it in so that they couldn't just foreclose they, on you. Uh, they can't do that. So if, for instance, it goes into foreclosure... Or there's a bankruptcy situation, you can apply for assignment of rents. Interesting. So they can't collect that money to keep. So they the can't can. collect the money and keep fighting you with it. <clears throat> That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I mean, I mean, tech, they, they they know. Do they always know that there is an end to this? They can't win. No, but it's just, you know, if you get frequent filers, they just know how to drag it out and. Frequent fl- filers. Frequent filers, people who have They're filed frequent more. flyers. Yes, frequent filers. That's hard to say. They, frequent flyers. <laughs> you've butchered it. And there you go, folks. That'll be on the episode two hundred blooper reels. Uh, uh, yeah, flyers, but you get people who will just flyers. continuously file. So that's something patterns, right? You look for patterns. That's a bad one. That's a bad pattern. <laughs> that's a bad pattern to be in. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, all right. So. Episode 100, uh, we should probably give something away. So, yeah. We're giving something away? Well, I mean... To uh, who? I don't know. Somebody leaves a comment. Let's see here. We'll, we'll hide an Easter egg in here in the post, post-production. post There'll be some kind of sneaky thing that was done. 
a sneaky thing that was done. Maybe like a leprechaun running across a desk or something like that. Something, something fun. We'll just pop up in the corner. You gotta, t- you gotta give us a timestamp. When they, when they saw it, the first person to do it, we're sending you a t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> that was fun, right? Yeah, that was good. I saw um, Mr. Ballin do it. Mr. Ballin did it, so must work. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll have, uh, we'll continue to do it. Brett is going to, he's going to have a bunch of cameras and recording d- stuff, and he'll be at DME. If you're going to DME, stop mm-hmm. and say hello to Brett. And, uh, you know, well, I'll have all these cameras. Thank God Mike's going with us because <laughs> me alone with just the cameras being <laughs> be bad news. Yes, so I will be, be there. Fun. I will be, I won't be able to attend this one. I have a, a family engagement, but uh, looking forward to hearing all the great things that are that happen there. Yeah, me too. Should be fun. I like Nashville. I like food. So let's do it. <laughs> so, all right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. See ya. Are you new to the mortgage note industry? Have you been wanting to learn the step-by-step process to purchase your first mortgage note? Well, you're in luck. We've convinced our CEO, Rick Allen, to break down everything he knows about mortgage note investing. Through a series of 50 videos, you'll get everything from start to finish of where to purchase notes, how to purchase notes, and all of Rick's investing techniques he has developed over the many years. From performing note tactics to non-performing notes, Rick gives you everything he knows about investing. Bonuses include our glossary of industry terms, Rick's own proprietary calculators he created to evaluate notes, discounts from our partners, our Rolodex of vendors, a private Facebook group, along with a lot more. We've packed so much content into the Academy to take you from beginner to expert in no time. To learn more about the Academy, go to academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. Again, that is academy.paperstack.com slash welcome.